Video sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Johnny Gomez. And I'm Nick Diamond. Johnny, the crowd is buzzing, the adrenaline's flowing, and any second now, hell's gonna bust loose all over this arena. Before death battle, epic rap battle, or cartoon beatboxing, in 1998, we had Celebrity Deathmatch. It was an MTV stop-motion series pitting public figures against each other to the death. Schwarzenegger vs. Stallone, Spielberg vs. Hitchcock, Hillary vs. Monica, or even the face-off we were all waiting for. It's Rage Against the Machine against the Machine. Hosted by fictional commentators Johnny Gomez and Nick Diamond, this series reached over 90 episodes and used to be one of MTV's most popular cartoons. But what did real celebs think of CDM? Did any of them do their own voices? And how did this show sort of help cancel Clone High? Say what? Well, let's find out. Helping me in this vid is ScorePN, who made many celebrity deathmatch and Mortal Kombat videos on YouTube. Cue the intro, it's Juice and Jam time. Let's get it on! Our origin takes us to 1995 when cartoonist Eric Fogel had just finished his first TV show, MTV's The Head, a short-lived series that looks like the original Code Lyoko. But he had another cartoon idea, two celebrities fighting. Seems like a simple pitch, which was instantly greenlit. Or it would be if that actually happened. A pile driver. How much punishment can one man take? The execs didn't quite get it, like, how's that gonna work for half an hour? So, Eric created logos, fight matchups, and clay prototypes of the main characters. He then talked to Spike Decker, as in the Spike and Mike Animation Festival guy. Spike gave Eric an incredibly small budget to pursue the animation. To complete this short would cost more, but Eric knew this concept had potential. Meanwhile, at MTV, their big series, Beavis and Butthead, was coming to a close. None of their animated shows besides Dario was really sticking, so MTV needed another hit. That's when Eric's producer friend decided to be his wingman and tell those executives about Celebrity Deathmatch. Later that evening, Eric was called up by the channel for more info. So, he dropped Spike and Mike and headed to MTV, bringing along his designs, puppets, and ideas. Two celebrities meet in a boxing ring and beat the living shit out of each other. But you can't actually beat the shit out of a celebrity, can you? Of course you can. It's claymation. You can do anything you want. Eventually, they understood. MTV ordered three animated shorts done on the cheap with foam latex puppets filled with air bubbles, long gorilla arms, and skeletal wiring that broke all the time. These aired on Cartoon Sushi, a compilation series of shorts. Fun fact, Sushi's intro was animated by Danny Antonucci, the creator of Ed, Ed and Eddie. The first ever death matchup was Charles Manson versus Marilyn Manson. Two varying degrees of horrible people, oh boy. <laughs> He's down, and he's out, and the winner is Marilyn Manson! Conceptually, Deathmatch was a simple formula that can rely on star power without being affiliated with any of those stars. So many articles from back then were enamored at the very concept of CDM, thus boosting its ratings. With clay puppets, they could get away with a lot of gory fatalities. Seeing this stuff in stop motion was kind of horrific as a kid. <laughs> But trust me, there's far worse violence in this cartoon that I don't even want to look at. My name is Ian O'Helmers, and it would be a great honor if you would peel my arm like a banana. Mm. Okay, why the hell not? 
No, 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 no. As these shorts were traumatizing us, the Super Bowl was coming up. Typically during that event, MTV would air the Butt Bowl, a Beavis and Butthead special. Though because the series was ending, it wasn't happening that year. So they needed a replacement. And that's where CDM was creating Death Bowl 98. Yeah! That's only a few weeks away, and they have no story ideas, but this will be a big deal if Eric's crew can make the deadline. So they set some rules. Only use two combatants. Okay, well, uh, the network wanted more. They suggested the two biggest music groups at the time, Hanson versus the Spice Girls. That's eight new characters to create and animate. It's more people than the amount of crew members working on this. MTV also told their sponsors ahead of time that the special would get three million viewers guaranteed. Oh, and by this point, the series was still only shorts for Cartoon Sushi. If this special failed, Eric and the crew are out of the job while CDM will never become a full series. With so much on the line, Eric agreed, as he requested only one thing. Kill. Them. All. The... the puppets he means. Kill them all. Kill them all. With less than two months before the Super Bowl, Eric and his fellow animator Greg Pear began working during December. They barely got a Christmas break, their backs were in pain from leaning over, rashes were gained by the sandpaper wrestling ring, puppets were accidentally stepped on, but progress was being made, and more opportunities arose. Wrestler Stone Cold Steve Austin was promoting the special, Howard Stern was talking about Deathmatch, Eric happened to be at the mall hearing some teenagers talk about the show, and announcer Michael Buffer was signed on. During Super for Sunday, Death Bowl 98 came. Girl power! Truly a match to the death, as it seems like everyone in this ring is just barely holding on to consciousness. And now it's... Oh my God! Ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe my eyes, but it looks like all of our combatants have been obliterated. And this was it. This became, for the time, MTV's highest rated specials. The sponsors wanted 3 million viewers. They got... 4.6 as the series was greenlit after. But first, they assembled more talent. To work on the episode format, Chris Kresge was hired, a writer for WWF storylines and several MTV shows. Stone Cold himself frequently appeared on the series as a commentator, and to serve as referee was Mills Lane, which I just found out that's a real referee voicing themselves? What? He's a real character! He's a real character! Whoa! That Tom Green, what a character! Their first full episode was scheduled to air against the Seinfeld series finale. That only gave them less than five months to work with. This was Seinfeld versus Home Improvement. And it's not like there's no life for us after Seinfeld. I mean, there's movies, cable, dinner theater. Our futures are bright. Really bright! I gotta say, most of the celebrity voices are impersonated, yet they managed to find some really good sound alikes. Though I'm surprised they could not get a Weird Al Yankovic himself to face Al Gore. You grab Al by the head and you twist him real fast. You zip between his legs and you kick Whoa. him in the ass! Oh my god! Did Al Gore just pass a bill, Johnny? It appears to be some kind of log, Nick. That's no log, it's an executive oh, branch! I Nor could they get 60s Batman Adam West to face Christian Bale. Adam and Weird Al have done a ton of animated roles, but not here. Though at least with Adam West, he was impersonated by radio personality Ralph Garman. I used to listen to his and Kevin Smith's podcast a lot, Hollywood Babylon. Ralph was really good friends with Adam West and was a big help in getting him a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Just a few steps more. I guess the lack of actors playing themselves could be a time constraint. Stop motion takes so long and the voice acting has to be done early. But stars like Lucy Lawless, Mick Foley, Whoopi Goldberg, Gremblo, Gilbert Gottfried, and more did voice themselves. So what did it take to make a stop motion show weekly? Well, we'll find out after these messages. Are you tired of this happening? Well, you need Surfshark VPN. Yes, sir, the sponsor of tonight's video. What's a VPN? It's great. It changes your internet region and protects your privacy. You got Netflix? Just switch regions and bam, you can see what other countries have on their Netflix. It's that easy. How about something to keep you safe, especially on public Wi-Fi? Nothing can stop you. 
Use the code REBELTAXI to get 83% off plus 3 extra months. Don't like that? You got a 30 day money back guarantee. Oh what, you got an incognito window on your browser? Wow, that's completely useless. Surfshark VPN, it's got clean web. This thing will block malicious ads, trackers, and malware. Don't trust an internet provider, trust Surfshark VPN. Use the code REBELTAXI to get 83% off plus 3 extra months. You got a 30 day money back guarantee. VPN. Deathmatch was written and animated all within the MTV animation department in New York, next to all the other 2D shows. Slowly, their production was taken over the 31st floor of that skyscraper. Cubicles and offices became storage areas, makeshift tailors, and hospitals to fix up the puppets. People were animated in broom closets at points. The building's ventilation shaft had to be altered to accommodate a spray painting booth. Just the animation alone in this half-hour series took four to five weeks to finish. This was one of the earliest stop-motion productions to use digital cameras hooked up to a computer, which sped up the process. This camera is basically pad straight into the computer. The, the frames are stored right onto the hard drive. You can immediately like work out the timing by eye. If there is a problem, if we notice, oh, you know, his arm's not twisting the right way or something, we can actually go back and correct the mistake. You know, delete those frames and sort of pick up at a certain point. That's the convenience of digital. Had this been shot on film cameras, they'd have to develop the photos in a lab before they could see what they look like. Hey, do kids today know what disposable cameras are? Do they know we had to go to a supermarket with a photo lab and wait like a week before the film is developed? As I make this, they apparently still sell disposable cameras. No idea why. Anyone who buys those are probably running from the FBI or something. Anyway, many of the deathmatch fights were greatly helped with CG or simple computer assistance. Once they figured out morphine effects, they were eager to use them as much as they could. It's a great mixture of classic and digital. And to do that, we actually sculpted um, five degrees of Jim Carrey's head growing. And I had to track where the veins were on the head and, the, you know, make sure that the eyes and the mouth expand all at the same time. And then we basically uh, morph between each head. And then there's a whole bunch of larger heads here that it's morphing in between. So when you see it played back, we get this nice smooth sort of morph. And then he explodes. Yeah, that looked good. There's a lot of fantastic moments of animation here. Just some real fun props showing the aftermath of a disfigurement. The amount of things they probably sculpted per episode seems ridiculous. Now, check this out. This is an original creature made for the show named Potato Con. He looks like the other child I disowned. Take a look at that, Nick. Apparently, MSG and DNA just don't mix. Jeez, you got this video on another tab? Look at this animation made on a TV schedule. All the tentacles, all the penetration. God, I wish that was me. That is what Studly spud. Now, the show was obviously a wrestling parody, which is good because that means the artist can recycle that same wrestling ring every episode. Or you would think that. Scratching the surface, I've seen people brush this series off as a dated, repetitive concept. I thought the same thing going into this, but it feels like the crew were aware of that and did everything they could to make each episode different from the last. The show was constantly reinventing itself. As a kid, my favorite was Beastie Boys versus Backstreet Boys. Not because of me liking or hating either of them, but because it was a giant robot fight. You put that stuff in a cartoon, eight-year-old me is gonna love it. There was even a bit of continuity, like if they killed a celeb and wanted to bring them back in a later episode, they had to find some way to revive them, even if it meant using dark magic. One of the frequent commentators on the show was Stacy Cornbread, whose voice actress left the series, so they killed her character off. Ah! I can't find any info on why she left the show, but they brought her character and actress back as a ghost in the Halloween episode to haunt her replacement. You stole my job! What? No, I didn't. You spontaneously combusted. Oh, but I had a choice. Hold it.
Now, of course, the one question you gotta ask is, how did celebrities feel about this show? While they may have pissed off someone, it feels like there was way more fans than you would expect. This book I found basically acts as an episode guide slash comic book retelling of scenes. It has tons of positive testimonies. Pause the video now if you wanna read them yourself, since I ain't sponsored by Audible tonight. Yes, a sort of comic book retelling. It was the year 2000, and tracking down the episode you wanted to watch was tough, so you just gotta use your imagination. Anyway, Eric even received this letter. I want a rematch. I have a new arsenal of digital weapons. A T-Rex and a gray white shark as my corner men. I would match that against Hitchcock, Cary Grant, and James Stewart any day. Accept the challenge. By the way, great show. Our kids loved it. All my best, Steven Spielberg. What? Among the few negative stories I could find was for Hansen, which I think was the first and last time they ever mocked any real-life child celebrities. If you remember, they were crushed by stage lights cut by Marilyn Manson. A friend of mine called me and he said that um, uh, the Hansen boys were watching it and their father called their record company and complained because they were crying. So I thought it was great that I could make those kids cry. I think we heard from Mariah Carey, who was happy that she uh, beat Jim Carey. Now, the favorite thing about my Clay character is I think he's pretty cool looking. At it. <laughs> and one episode, he wore a white doctor's coat. I kind of got a kick out of that little scientific experiment. But one of the things I don't like, I've noticed he only has four fingers. When flipping people off, I think it might present somewhat of a problem. Kathy Lee Gifford, there was actually an article in the Globe where she called us a bunch of sick puppies. Now, MTV was worried about going too far again. There was an episode about Genghis Khan versus Gandhi. <coughs> oh boy, nothing bad ever happened to an MTV cartoon making fun of Gandhi. Ah! They were worried about offending India, but they aired the fight with not a single complaint. Well, that's good. Hey, there's this MTV show premiering in a few years in 2002. It's gonna have their own Gandhi parody as a main character, so that'll be fun. No group of people will be mad and cancel the series. There's just no stopping this bad man. You guys are next. So I guess Celebrity Deathmatch is one of the reasons Clone High got canceled. It's like they walked over a minefield with no problems only for the person behind them to explode. <laughs> One episode Deathmatch almost did was based on Star Trek, Captain Kirk versus Captain Picard. The voices and storyboards were done and just needed animation. Even William Shatner himself gave it his blessing, though Paramount did not want them making fun of their billion dollar franchise. Eric argues everyone's done Star Trek parodies and not doing this fight only hurts the fans. Oh well, hey, at least they got to do Beavis versus Butthead. Cool. Do me, do me. Yeah. I'm not doing you, asswipe. Do yourself. Cool. Damn it. Help. As a thank you to the fans, CDM would have multiple fandomonium specials where they do matchups voted by viewers online. By participating, these voters would be entered into the Torin Gore sweepstakes. These randomly chosen winners got to be animated into an episode, followed by death. <laughs> Wow. One of these lucky winners got to be sacrificed to Satan. Why? So he can revive the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, who both died earlier in the series. What an honor. This implies one human life is valued at 10 boy band members. So then Nicholas Cameraman's got to spend the rest of his life in hell just for being our number one fan? That was pretty rotten, Nick. But I guess it was worth it. <laughs> This show feels like they did as much as they could with this premise. By 77 episodes, CDM ended in 2002. MTV was just moving away from animation, but it was over for America as after cancellation, there was Celebrity Deathmatch Hits Germany. These were animated shorts only aired in or around that territory featuring a new host and fighters only recognizable there. There are no English subtitles and I have no idea what's going on. Or what about the 2003 video game for PC and consoles? Got my copy autographed by Joey Fatone of NSYNC, which that whole music group is playable. This game is horrible and I'll save it for another video. Lastly, Marilyn Manson, goddammit. Marilyn Manson was such a big fan of the series that he even commissioned them to animate a music video, Astonishing Perils of End Times.
Now, you think the series is over now? Oh no. Four years after cancellation, Deathmatch came back as part of MTV2's Sickimation animation block in 2006. It's all new and coming your way. Right here, right now. Back by popular demand. It's the return of Celebrity Deathmatch. Yeah, Deathmatch was back. Now look at this glow up. All the models and sets got a huge upgrade. Though you could argue the crumminess of old just had more heart to it. This production was now under a different studio experience in stop motion. Cup of coffee. <laughs> These new seasons, numbered 5 and 6, was more of what you'd expect, although it was often a circle jerk of other Viacom stars fighting. The Jackass crew, Bam Margera, Andy Milanakis, Aston Kutcher, and Nick Cannon, which is good because I still don't know what Nick Cannon even does, so he's of no value to me. Time to roll bounce! This revival seems to be a step down. There was not as many gimmick fights to spice things up, many of the voice actors were replaced, no Stone Cold, and often dialogue felt like the stars name-dropping titles on their IMDb or referencing some beef no one today would remember. Being dated was always kind of an issue with this series, but seasons 5 and 6 amplified those problems. These are also currently the only seasons available on streaming and digital stores, maybe because the older episodes used a lot more licensed music and and likely never considered digital distribution would be a thing. Regardless, this reboot was one of the most watched things on MTV2, but there was a problem. It was airing on MTV2, a channel no one watched, except me. A year into Sickimation's animation block, they started adding live action shows until eventually calling it quits. And that was the end of Celebrity Deathmatch so far. A few years after the second cancellation, Len Maxwell, the voice for co-host Nick Diamond in the OG series, died in 2008 at the age of 77. R.I.P. Johnny Gomez's first voice? I don't know where they are now. They only play that one character and nothing else according to IMDb. R.I.P. Possibly. Hello everyone, I'm Johnny Gomez. And I'm Nick Diamond. I'd like to remind viewers that our show deals with mature themes, including graphic violence and extreme bloodshed. Let's hope it does. <laughs> I don't think anyone will be going home disappointed tonight, Nick. Wait, what the hell are these freaks doing? The fight is out of control. Let's get it on! Even without feet, he's too fast for the Reaper. They're tearing up the ring and the fans. I told you, Johnny. This is what happens when you try to play God. Stone Cold, do something. Okay, hang on. And Natalie takes a spit two to the head. The Dixie Chicks are in trouble. Setting her up for a Norwegian neck catapult. Look out, Drew. Again, it's not over. In 2010, there was a Lady Gaga vs. Madonna fight on YouTube, though that was actually a fan animation. In 2015, MTV2 said they'll be reviving it again. This time, viewers online could vote for the winner, and it might be CG, or these could just be some special effect assets. There was an unaired stop-motion pilot for Taylor Swift vs. Katy Perry. No footage is online, though I found these screenshots on the website of Big Object Studios. They mentioned the revival was not picked up, as the creator confirms the same in 2016. Although in 2018, Ice Cube himself, best known for Are We Done Yet, would be an executive producer and commentator. But that's the last we've heard of this revival so far. There goes Ice Cube, Whoa. and he's down. Yeah. 
some of you may ask, do we really need this formulaic show to come back? Well, you look at stuff like death battle, epic rap battles, or cartoon beatboxes, there's clearly a market for this kind of stuff, and a never-ending supply of new celebrity beefs to parody. Tons of adult animation on TV involves stop motion, and it seems like a lot of celebs were flattered to be mocked. At worst, I'd imagine now that we're more aware of abuse in the industry, there'd be some subjects they'd want to avoid. Maybe not today, but I would not be surprised if Deathmatch were to return for Paramount Plus or something in the near future. It seems like a fun show to work on too. In most other TV productions, creator Eric Vogel had to communicate with animators by traveling overseas or on Skype, but because Deathmatch was mostly done in-house, writers and animators could easily develop gags together. It just wasn't an experience you could get anywhere else. As strange as it was to produce a clay wrestling show in that corporate building in the heart of Manhattan, I could not have imagined producing Celebrity Deathmatch any other way. Looking back, it truly was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Uh, well, folks, after that last one, Nick and I have to hit the road. We'd like to thank our Deathmatch fans on the streets of New York City and all over the world. And especially you fans at home. Thanks for watching. For Celebrity Deathmatch, I'm Nick Diamond. And I'm Johnny Gomez. Good fight, good night. Premiere of Senseless Acts of Video.